Hello, hello, guys. Once again, welcome to Farming in Africa. And as usual, my name is Fred. Today, I found myself in the US in Indiana. If you guys watch my previous video, I told you that I'm here to learn about AI and artificial insemination. And number two, to learn how to fight bacteria in Africa. So I'm here visiting farms that practice the same method like we do in West Africa, which is very confined and intensive system of farming. And I think this knowledge is very useful to us um, in West Africa and maybe East Africa as well. But here I am today and today I'm so excited because what I'm learning and discovering is just mind blowing. Um, you know, I paid visit to a farm that is very interested in embryo um, and artificial insemination and that's all what they do. And we've come to another farm driven like seven hours to, um, you know, Illinois to, to, to Indiana today. And um, what I'm learning here is amazing. And of course, as always, I want to share the best with you. I want to share my findings with you guys so that we can all grow together. I think one of the reasons why I moved away from um, commercial farming into more of modeling farming and helping you guys is so that we can grow together. I cannot feed the continent by myself. I cannot feed the whole Ghana by myself, but if I can help you and inspire you and show you the right way and share my ideas with you, and if you can succeed as well, then we can all grow together and someday, you know, we will not import anything, uh, meat or agricultural stuff into our countries. But today, why am I excited? I want to show you something. As you guys know, AI, artificial insemination is something that I'm passionate about this year and want to start doing in West Africa. So Godfrey, I've gone to South Africa, done the training, but I've come to the US as well to look at what they're doing. And the reason why I've come to the US, or my goal for AI is the Boa goats and the Kalahari red that we are bringing from South Africa. Number one, these goats are very expensive. So no matter what, we cannot bring enough to be able to fill our market. And therefore, what we need to do is to crossbreed these goats with our local West African dwarfs. There are so many benefits to the reason why we need to do this. Number one most important thing is the fact that our local West African dwarfs are more resistant to the bacteria and the weather and the environment here. And therefore, it is great for us to crossbreed them because then the babies are not just going to be resistant they're also going to be bigger because the uh, boa goat and the kalaharis are bigger and we farmers can sell them higher because the consumers can also have more meat. So it's a win-win situation. And therefore, if you're a farmer, then you should be excited about it. And this has been my goal and vision. But well, there is a problem with that. The problem is that because the boa goats are bigger than our West African dwarfs, it makes it very difficult for the males, which is the bucks, to hump the local West African dwarfs, which is the doves. And therefore, that is why we are thinking about doing artificial insemination. And therefore, let me go into it and explain what that means. So what that means is that instead of the buck, which is the boa buck, to hump the West African dwarf, which is impossible, we are then going to collect the semen from the buck. When we collect that semen, now we can put it into an instrument and whether virginal or um you know there's there's another method that i can remember um i don't want to pronounce it wrongly um but yeah two ways we can then put it into the female right so we can collect the semen from the male and then we can put it into the female by so doing there is no natural humping and therefore we are able to achieve pregnancy there is a problem there too. In order for us to achieve this pregnancy, my problem is, yes, the pregnancy can be achieved, but these are West African goats. Will they be able to deliver? That's the question. Will they be able to deliver the big boa goats that are going to come out of them? And today I'm in a farm here and I want to show you guys. So I'm going to flip my camera. Um, so this is the farm, but I'm going to show you guys exactly what this farm is doing, which is exactly what we want to do. So this farm here has these goats. And what are these goats again? These are the Spanish goats. So these are the Spanish goats. And what else do they have here? 
they also have the boa goat here so you can see right but they know that the boa goats are expensive and they don't have enough and there are some genetics that are really good they don't want to lose it and therefore what are they doing so what you're doing is collecting a semen of the small boa goats that they have and putting it into these female boa goats so once they put into this few mega boa goats, they ovulate. So once they ovulate, what they do is, through artificial insemination, they now transfer the embryo into these goats, right? So the goat you can see lying down, it's not dead. It's just in anesthesia. So they just pull them down so that they can carry this process. And that process is, ha is happening right here. I am watching it live. I have watched thousands of goats, not thousands, but a lot of goats being done. And now I'm here recording this video to share that knowledge with you. Look at that boa goat standing there. Very beautiful boa goat. Right? How do you get this genetic? True what is happening. Right? No, it's fine. <laughs> so basically this goat now is done and it's going to rest till it wakes up and then it will be pregnant. And these are the... Um, Tim, do you want to tell me a little bit about the Spanish goats? <laughs> They're a breed from the desert. Mm -hmm. They're very hardy, okay. very durable. Yeah. They're a medium-sized goat, but they're really good mothers when they run in the wild. Okay. So why are we using the Spanish goats aside all the they're other goats? They're cheap and they're really good mamas. Mm, so cheap and good mamas. Yep. Right? So t to me, that's our West African dwarf goats. Resistance, also very cheap. So in case we want to be able to transfer embryos from the boa goats, which we already know, into the West African goats, then that's sort of in terms of cheapness or prices that is what we can use all right guys so you heard tim they are using the spanish goats because number one they are good mamas number two they are very cheap so if i have a few boa goats then what is cheap in ghana is the west african dwarfs so that's the best option i have to be able to use them for whether embryo transfer but the biggest challenge as we all know is going to be the size and that is something we will need to cross once we get there but this time i'm here to learn um, but at least i know that it's working with certain breed of goats so now what is the size they are working with and how do we get that size whether with our f1 crossing or f2 or maybe there is other goat breeds you know in west africa that we have to try and make use of so the research continues and we are going to continue um learning and practicing and testing and failing and um <laughs> yeah god knows how long it's gonna take but today i'm excited because i'm seeing the vision happen right in front of me not a boa goat to a boa goat we've seen that but a boa goat with another breed and giving you a pure um you know boa goats and i think i want to show you guys that because i haven't shown you i think there is a goat out there that um had boa goats, pure had boa boa goats. goats yeah, yeah but the so they went through this process uh -huh. they collect them out of these yeah put them in the spanish yeah. and she had the babies down here. all right let's follow tim and um see those goats because that's the same process we're gonna do so this goat here is yep. the result of what we did today exactly so you can see that's a spanish goat and giving birth to a pure boa goat the embryo was the a embryo, pure embryo boa exactly. goat. she wasn't bred to him she was implanted yeah implanted so, so that's a hundred percent boa goat yeah even though it was given birth to by a spanish, a spanish goat exactly and these are some pure um, boa goats as yep. well as you guys can see right look at that baby very strong very beautiful so if you have a baby like that it's better you use it with a west african and get more genetics out of it yeah so they go from here to here yeah. and these are the ones that tested pregnant okay so these goats went through the process okay and now they're carrying pure goat babies they're exactly. pregnant with goat babies inside wow this is so amazing that's what these are yeah, so these goats here, even though they are Spanish goats, the baby they are carrying is pure boa goats. And this is the goal, guys. Someday, I want you guys to come to my farm or visit your farm, see West African dwarves or Senan goats, whatever goat, 
are carrying pure boa gold, Kalahari gold, or Savannah gold, depending on what you want. And that's the vision. That is why we are here today. And that is what we are going to try our best to achieve. Um, let me know in the comment below what you guys think. Yeah. So, one of these goats mm -hmm. gave 19 babies today. 19. Yeah. Another one gave 17. 17 babies. So, that's why we need all these goats to put the babies in because mm. the embryos some of them are more mature mm -hmm. and they so they have a little cell around them yeah but when that ruptures or ripens mm -hmm. they need to be put in right away you yeah. cannot freeze those you cannot freeze it they got to be so young before you can freeze them there's mm. only a certain stage so mm. that's why they get put in fresh mm. they'll still work fresh but mm. they won't work frozen I see. So you get three stages. You get one that's not developed, that's no good. Mm -hmm. One that's mature that needs to be put in right away. And then one that can be frozen or put in either way. It's your choice. I see. Wow. So all these goals that are coming out, they've been put into them. And we are going to test them in how many weeks? Five months. In five months. They so give the bread. end of July, they'll have a baby. They'll have babies. And they'll have purebred, purebred goats. goats. And... That's the goal, that's the vision, guys. Um, and this needs to happen in West Africa as well as possible. So, yeah, we are looking forward to it. Um, yeah, guys, I hope you have understood the process that we are learning here and what we are trying to do here. Um, but if you have any question, let me know. This is gonna take us some time, but I am very sure that it would happen. Tim, do you want to say bye to everyone? <laughs> bye, Thanks Tim. Thanks for coming and learning, and hopefully it will help you in the future. Definitely, we, we are hoping so. We're very hopeful. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video that I do. Um, I don't know what other thing we're gonna learn here, but so far I'm very happy that I'm, I've, I came, and um, it's been such an educational trip for me. And thank you. I hope you guys are home. Also, I appreciate the efforts. I will see you next time.